Okay, hi everyone. It's me again from the last um, talk. I mean the last uh, meetup. So today I'll be talking about child themes and um, understanding child themes, the parent and child theme relationship in WordPress, and why I think it's one of the most um, in one of the more important um, aspects. Um, of WordPress, when you, uh, regardless of if you're into WordPress development or just a user of WordPress. So, my name is Edmund. Um, I've recently been a WPS um, WordPress engineer. And this is my email address. If you want to reach out, feel, feel free to, um, to drop me an email. And I also blog, although not so frequently, I try to, um, on development stuff. So, if you're interested, you can give it a read. Okay, and these are the few things, um, few points that we'll be touching today. So what is a child theme? We'll be looking at um, the parent-child theme relationship in WordPress. Why should we use a child theme? Um, we'll take a look at um, why, why, why was child theme even introduced in the first place? What problem was it, um, was it trying to solve? And then we'll, we'll look at when to use the child theme. Do we, should, we, should we use the child theme every time we are setting up a WordPress site? Um, yes and no. And lastly, we'll look at how to create a child theme. So there are two ways um, to, to do so. One is to create a plugin. One is to use a plugin. And the other one is to do the manual way. And I'll show you a demo of um, both ways um, at the end of the talk. OK, so before we look at um, a child theme. I think it's important to understand what is the parent and child theme relationship in WordPress. So as you all know, a theme in WordPress um, is this, if you, look at this in, if you look at the file directory, it's this um, folder that consists of a lot of files, template files, all your um, static assets. Those, those um, files are required for the theme to work, for your WordPress site to look, um, to look properly on the front end. So a, a theme can, so those are considered a full theme. It consists of all the required files. And um, some of the more popular ones include 2020, the recently uh, released default theme, generate press, underscores, extra, and many more. So all these are considered um, full theme. And all the full themes can actually be, be transformed into a parent theme when you are using a shell theme. What do I mean by that? So if you look at this um, example, over here I have two themes installed um, in this WordPress installation. I have the 2020 and generate press. So these two are considered full themes because there isn't any child themes um, being created here. But if I were to create a child theme that is based on 2020 theme, that 2020 theme will automatically be regarded as a parent theme. So as you can see, I have a child theme over there that is based on 2020. So my 2020 theme has become a parent theme. Generate Press is still considered a full theme because there is no child theme um, created based on that yet. So based on that, you can um, kind of understand the parent and child theme relationship. The child theme is intended to work with the parent theme. What it means is that when you create a child theme, right, it inherits all the look and function of your parent theme. So technically speaking, if you were to create, um, initially, if you were to create a shell theme, and if you were to activate it, your site shouldn't look any um, different because it inherits your, how your parent theme looks like. And it actually changes, it allows you to change only parts of the parent theme. And of course, the child theme can never it's not able to work without a parent theme. So in this case, if I were to deactivate the child theme, my 2020 theme can still work well because it's, it's a parent theme. So once I deactivate, the child theme is going to be converted back into a regular theme. But if, if, I were to if I were to remove the parent theme, then my child theme will not be working and the site will be broken. So this is what it means by, this is why a child theme is only intended to work with a parent theme. And this is how it's, pro how it's gonna, uh, how a typical file directory looks like when you have a shell theme. This is uh, inside the slash themes folder. So as you can see, I have the 2020 theme and then um, I created another folder. I, I named it 2020-child. And on the, on the left side, 
of um, this is the fo folder structure of my of the parent theme. So I so I mentioned a parent theme is actually a full theme that consists of all the required files. So as you can see, there are so there are way more files than um, than in the child theme. Those files are required for the parent theme to work. But if you were to create a shell theme, you only need to have this num uh, few, a, few, uh, a few files that you want to uh, overwrite. So what I mean is that any file that you want to um, overwrite from the parent theme, you can copy it and paste it into the child theme. So in this case, I have a footup.php in the child theme and in the parent theme. So if you were to... Um, put it in the child theme, the footer.php will actually overwrite the one in, your, in the parent theme. So this is what it means by um, files being added to the child theme will actually be used instead of the parent theme. There is one exception, which is the functions.php. Um, we'll, during the demo, we'll take a look at that. So this is how the demo site um, looks like on the front end. So this is before I installed the child theme. This is the footer um, by default, just um, the copyright text and then powered by WordPress. So I decided, what if I decide to um, add my own text? For example, I want to customize the footer. I would have to do this um, duplication of file into the child theme folder, and then I'll can, I can edit the code, and then this will appear in the footer on my, of my site. So this is what it, what it means by um, the, child theme being, the child theme overriding the parent theme. Okay, so at this point, you, you might be wondering why do we need to go through so much trouble to just um, <laughs> add a few lines of text or add whatever customization? Why can't we just um, edit the why why can't we just edit the parent theme um, directly? Why do we need to create a shell theme? So before the whole idea of um, shell theme was introduced, developers and users um, in the past they face this issue of um, being able to customize their, their, their site. So what I mean is that they can, you can, they can, they can edit all the files, um, open up the files and edit the code, so it's fine. But when it comes to updating the theme, if they were to update the theme, all their changes will be uh, removed. So that was, um, and that was quite a big issue because imagine if your, the theme that you're using has this major exploit the theme that you're using has this third-party file that is um, vulnerable. So the obvious thing, is to, obvious thing to do is to quickly update your theme. But then you wouldn't want to update your theme because if you were to do so, all your changes would be um, erased. So that's when um, the, the core team and the community came up with this idea of child theme. So the, the biggest problem, is, um, the biggest problem it, it solves is, to, is that it allows you to update your parent theme safely and um, having all your, all your changes still in tech. Okay, so this is an example of how, what, I, what I mean. So this is me editing the parent theme directly. So I added some um, CSS changes, and then I refresh, changes work, and then I went to update the theme. So after the theme updates, I went to refresh, my changes um, are gone. So that is what I mean by being able to safely update the parent theme. So why do we use a child theme? Um, I think if there's one, um, if you had to take away one lesson from this talk, then it's going to be that child theme actually allows you to safely modify the parent theme. Although it has other benefits, but I think this is the most important um, advantage it gave you. So it allows you to safely modify the parent theme, like what we have seen. It also speeds up development time. So what I mean by this, um, for example, if you are selecting, uh, choosing to use a theme, and then you chance upon like 2020 theme, you like the look and feel of it, but you don't really like maybe the footer part, or you don't like the sidebar. So what you can do is you can just install the, that theme and then create a child theme based on that, and then you can overwrite whichever parts that you, you don't like. So you don't have to recreate the whole theme from scratch. The foundation is already, already there, so it speeds up development time. And also, when you're using a child theme, you can safely update all your parent theme, um, and then all the updates will flow seamlessly into your child theme. You don't have to worry about 
um, your child team not receiving the latest um, features from your parent team. And lastly, it's also a great way to learn about how um, themes work in WordPress. When you are building child themes, you are probably going to encounter like the template hierarchy, how what, how the theme development works in WordPress. So I think it's a good um, way to start in, if you are into theme theme development. And okay, so having said that, when should we use a child theme? So if you are if you find yourself constantly adding new functions or modifying styles or if you are looking to um, looking to change like certain parts of the site like the footer the sidebar the header um, what we call template overrides or to make it <laughs> make things um, simple in my opinion I think that if you're not building a theme from scratch then I think you should um, be using a child theme this is this can be um, debatable because um, a lot of um, discussions um, have been circulating around um, re regarding regarding um, the use of child themes. Like, why do I even need to use a child theme? Why can't I just install? If I want to make just a small small um, CSS change, why can't I just install like this custom CSS plugin? That's where that's that plugin allows you to uh, insert your changes, so you don't have to create a child theme. So. That is true um, to, a, to a certain extent. I think it, it's, it boils down to personal preference. For me, I prefer to edit the code, to open up the font and, and, and edit the code. But most people think that uh, they can just install a plugin and do their changes over there. Fair enough. So in that case, they might not require a child theme. They can just um, use the plugin to implement all their changes. On the other hand, some other users feel that they are not going to customize their um, their site much. They are probably going to use a page builder, for example, and then they are just going to create the whole look and feel of their site using the builder. So they feel that, oh, there's a, there isn't a need for me to um, use a child theme. But I think that it's, it's true probably at a point of time, but in the future, if you are looking to pass it, um, looking to find a developer to, um, to, to customize your site, to add, add some new features, and in my, in, my, in my experience, when I receive um, a theme, uh, a site that doesn't use a child theme, I would be a bit um, worried to actually just go in and edit because the code, um, the, the previous developers might actually be editing, um, they might have really actually just edited the whole parent theme. So I wouldn't want to just go in and create a child theme. So I think that if you're just using um, a page builder or if you think that you're not going to customize your site, I, th I, think, I think it's still worth it to just spend that one, two minutes to create a child theme and just, just leave it there in the future because it's probably going to bite you, come back and bite you. And okay, so how, so as I mentioned, there are two ways to um, create a child theme. This is one of the plugins that is available um, in the repo. I think this is one of the more straightforward ones. The others, they actually ask you a lot of, um, questions and more features, which I don't think is necessary. So what this plugin does is that once you, oh, sorry, this is, um, this, this is one way of using it, uh, creating a plugin, you, using, a, using a plugin, and the other one is to just manual, uh, manually create a folder and then implement all the required files yourself. Okay, so, so in a child theme, the, the minimum, minimally, you need to have one file which is the style.css, in order for the child theme to work. And in, this, in the style.css, you need to insert this header block. Um, and then if you, see, if you look at the highlighted um, line, that is, that is the most important um, comment. So in this, um, in this example, I'm using, I chose to enter template uh, 2020. This means I'm using the 2020 theme as my parent theme. So this needs to match the name of your parent theme directory. And next, um, you can create a functions.php. This is not necessary, but it's um, in order for your site not to break, you probably need to want to have this as well. So in this um, functions.php, what you need to do is to um, implement your parent style, bring in the style sheet from your parent theme, and then include the style sheet of your child theme. This way, 
This way, when you activate your child theme, it will still look the same as your parent theme because you're using, you're including the child theme, uh, parent themes style sheet. So this is probably going to be a lot clearer when I show you um, the example. So uh, when, once you're done, you can just um, just activate your child theme in the appearance um, theme page in your WordPress admin. And okay, I just I'm just gonna go through a quick demo, starting with uh, using a plugin to create a shell theme. So this is my WordPress installation. I have um, okay, maybe I'll just show you how it looks like. What happens if you were to actually edit your parent theme directly? So let me just open up. Um, the style.css, for example. So this is the style sheet of my parent theme. So maybe I just want to go in and edit the background color. Save it, and then go to my theme, go to my front end. So I managed to change the background color of the body section, which works great. But what if I choose to Right now, what if I? What happens if I update the theme? So, okay, the theme is updated now. If I were to refresh it, you see that the changes have been erased, and my code is no longer here. So this is why we use a child theme. Okay, so this is the plugin I was talking. Um, I was telling you guys about child theme. You can search for child theme generator. <coughs> so like what I said, there are a lot of um, options for you to choose from, but this is the one I was, um, I'm referring to, child theme generator. Is there a reason why this, you should use um, I just feel that this is the more um, straightforward, one, straightforward one. If you were to actually use this and it's just going to show you this screen and then ask you questions, and then you can just create a shell theme. For the others, they actually have more tabs for you to um, do more stuff. I don't think it's necessary. It's more complex. Uh. Yeah, more complex. It, it still works, but it's just more things for you to, to, to study. I don't think it's necessary. Though. So this is the more straightforward one. Um, okay, so I've already activated it. and So this is how it looks like. Um, you don't really need to fill in all this. As they mentioned over here, all fields are optional. But this is the one that you need to choose from. So right now, I only have one theme, um, one other theme activated, which is this. So what this does is that it's going to create a child theme based on this parent theme. So I'm just going to go click create a new theme. And they'll just ask you if you want to activate the child theme. So you can just click Finish. OK. So if you look at the theme, the themes page, you see this new child theme created. You can actually change this image if you want. Um, if you go to your site directory, the file directory, you should see this new folder here, 2020 child. So this is the screenshot that you can, you can just um, replace it with another image, but you must name it as screenshot.png. So right now, if we were to go back to the front end, it's going to look the same. Nothing, ha nothing has changed. But we can safely um, up, insert our custom any changes that we want without having it being erased when we update the theme. So right now I am, I think I just set it to red color. Yep. So let me just roll back and bring in the old version of the 2020 theme. Uh, just delete this. Oops. Okay, so right now I'm back to the old version, which requires an update. Okay, so right now I, the the site is, has still uh, still has my changes. So if I were to update the parent theme, you'll see that um, our changes will still be intact. So updated, refresh, and then you can. It's still, um, the background color is still red. So this is how you create a child theme using a plugin.
I will just go through quickly go through how you would to create it, um, how to create it the manual way if you don't want to use a plugin. If you're not really uh, if you don't want to bloat your <laughs> WordPress admin with too many plugins. So let me just delete this one. So like what I mentioned, you have to create a, another directory. You can name it whatever you want, but um, according to WordPress best practices, it's good to have the same name as the parent theme and then append it with a dash chow at the end. Okay, and um, the file that you need that needs to be in the child theme is this style.css file. And then in this file, what you need is this header block. If you were to search um, in the WordPress codex, they should have this um, snippets for you. So you can just copy and paste, and then you can just change um, the name, some of the values here. So I want this theme to be named 2020 child. And then most importantly, this template here has to be the same as the directory of your parent theme. This will tell WordPress that you're creating a child theme that is based on the 2020 team. So this is style.css. So you can leave it empty. You just need this header block. Right now, if you were to go to, let's see what happens if you were to go to the admin. OK, so I didn't include any screenshot. Maybe I'll just throw in one screenshot PNG here. I'm using the same, same image as the parent theme. So it's going to appear here. OK, right now, if I were to go to my front end, you see that everything breaks because my child theme is, remember what I mentioned just now about um, if the child theme and your parent theme has the same file. So if I were to open, so right now my child theme has the style.css and then my parent theme also has this style.css. So when, there are, when the files are present in, the, in both um, the folders, the one in the child theme is, is, um, will be the one that is being used. So right now, in my child theme, the style.css is empty. That's why on the front end, you'll see this, no styling at all. This is where the functions.php comes in. So I'm just going to throw in some code here. OK, so basically what this does is, this line here, it tells WordPress, I want to use my, um, I want to use my, Parent, parent theme style.css. So I'm bringing in it. And then over here, I also want to load my child theme.css. What it does is bring in both the style sheets. So if we were to refresh it, oh, let me just save it. So if we were to refresh it, you can see that our site, our site is back to normal. So right now we are using, we are inheriting the child, uh, the parent theme style sheet. And we can still update, do the updates on our child theme. So I can still change the background color to blue, for example. And then it's going to change. So with these two files over here, um, style.css and functions.php, we can start to build our child theme. We can start to override um, the different parts of the site. So in the back end, we have. So is it trying to append? Yeah. CSS no, it's loading two, two star sheets. If you were to look at the network tab, right, you'll see that there are two. So if it's a .php file, what happens? If it's a .php file, so right now, yeah. Um, OK, let me just show you the example. Uh, if I were to use the footer.php. For footer.php, we are not, in, we are not um, including both because in our functions.php, we're only enqueuing the style sheet. So what does enqueuing mean? Enqueuing means to kind of like load the style sheet. It's uh, basically random. Uh, so, but we're not doing anything to the PHP files. So by default, if we were to have a footer.php over here, it's, yeah, it's going to load this one instead. Not so if, like yeah, because CSS, we are actually enqueuing both. They are bringing in both. But for, food, uh, for the PHP files, we are only using whatever that is present in the child theme. So, um, so you can't enqueue it also, right? There isn't a reason for you to be. You cannot enqueue Java to a PHP file, right? You can. You can enqueue no, you can enqueue you can enqueue 
um, JavaScript files as well. But there isn't reason. There isn't. There isn't a reason for you to want to have two footer PHP, right? So, if you want to have, I mean, if you want to change the footer PHP, what you want to do is, for example, just copy this into your child theme folder and then edit this one. So maybe they say power. If I want to change this line, I can just edit here, and then it's just gonna be reflected yeah. over here. So. When you're doing this, you can still update your child, your parent team, and then your footer.php will still be intact, the changes. So if you're uh, editing very heavily on the child, yeah. if you update something and it's like totally over, I think uh, like your child has a, a particular yeah. file. Right. So that's what happens. That's what happens with um, WooCommerce. WooCommerce has a lot um, ha um I've done a lot of um, template overrides with WooCommerce. So when, for example, if there's this um, single, like a sing, like the, con the, the, the product archive um, template, if I was to overwrite that, and then WooCommerce release a new um, version that actually changes that structure, what you'll get is, uh, is this alert in the back end telling you that your theme override, um, your template override has, is outdated, and then they would want you to look at the new one and then compare it with the old one. So that's, that can be a bit um, more work to do if you were to actually overwrite a of um, templates. So um, for me, I wouldn't, if I want to add custom changes to my site, I wouldn't um, go immediately to, um, to look, I wouldn't look at template overriding first, I would look at using hooks first. So if there's no hook, for example, then I will look at, um, well, look at overriding a template. Then again, if you were to override, override a lot of templates, it's going to be quite um, challenging for you when, um, when the parent theme updates um, has a major update. So just now you mentioned that uh, you will tell you yeah. which file. Is it WooCommerce? Or WooCommerce it? will tell you. Because you're. Um, will tell you. Or is it a WordPress child function? No, it's, a word, it's, a, it's under WooCommerce um, the settings. They, they, will, they will let you know that your theme override, now your template override is outdated. So it's, um, it's WooCommerce will notify you. Other themes. It's just, um, no, it's the same thing. As long as you overwrite this WooCommerce template, WooCommerce actually knows you're using uh, your own template. And then they will notify you if there's any, um, if, if yours is outdated. That's only version number, right? It's not actually um, They actually, you can, you can yeah, you, one, one way to, to cheat is to, is to just change the version number at the, at the top of your template file. But then you probably want to look through the whole file and then compare. So, um, I think I've covered, um, oh yeah, another thing is, um, I was mentioning just now about functions.php, why is this different? So, any files that you, that, that exist in your child theme folder, right, if that file exists in your parent theme as, as well, it's gonna, your child theme will be the one um, overriding that. This is true except for functions.php. This is a bit um, special. What this does is, it loads your, shell theme functions.php first, and then it loads your parent theme functions.php after that. So this one is not gonna overwrite, because in your functions.php there are a lot of, um, there's probably gonna be a lot of um, custom functions, and if you were to overwrite the parent theme, your, your, your site is probably gonna break. So this is the only exception. It's gonna load both the functions.php, but the one in your shell theme is gonna be loaded first. Um, so, so if you're wondering why is the child theme the one being loaded first, if you were if you were to open some of the functions.php in certain certain themes, right? They have this um. They allow you to, they they call it like a pluggable function. They allow you to override the function. For example, in my parent theme, I have this um, I have this function over here. So in Certain themes, what they have before the before they, they they declare the function, they have this like if this function doesn't exist or something like that, then you run this, you create this function. Usually, when you're creating themes, right, you want to have you, you want to make your your functions pluggable. This means that adding this um condition conditional statement at the top of your of your function. So in this case, in this way. Since the functions.php of the child theme is being loaded first, you can create the same function. You 
can create the same function with the same name and then um, overwrite the way this function behaves. So let's say I have this one right now. And when my functions.php of my, of my child theme loads, it's going to create this function. And then when the parent theme, parent, parent theme's functions.php comes in, it will do a conditional check. It will check that whether this, or if this function name exists, then we don't have to create this one. So it's kind of like overriding, allow you, allows you to override functions. This is why the, the child theme functions.php loads first before your parent theme, in case you're wondering why. So I think I might have shown a little bit too much code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, I think um, that's, that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. <laughs> or are you guys convinced that you should use the child theme now? Oh. Yeah, that's a good question. So I think I might have skipped that part though. Um, so if you're building a theme from scratch, then there's no, no point for you to use your health theme. Because when you build a theme from scratch, you are... It's a small work, right? you yeah, it's small work. You're, you're, you're basically building like a 2020 theme from scratch. So there's no reason for you to, for you to use your health theme. So that is one. <laughs> I think to me, that is the only when I wouldn't use your health theme. Other than that, some people might, might, might like what I said just now. I, I'm not going to... I can just install a plugin to, to do all my changes. I can even insert um, CSS snippets into my customizer. Why do I need to use a child theme? So it's personal, personal preference, I think. I prefer to just open up the font and edit changes. I don't have to log into my admin and then go to the customizer and wait for it to load and then make the changes. So yeah, if I were to create a theme from scratch, I wouldn't use child theme. There isn't a reason for me to use child theme. Anything else? I'll ask you a question that's a bit reverse on what you should. Okay. But I have the, the stuff, the design. So, like converting a mock up. There are, there are other ways to do that. You can, you can, um, the, the hardcore coders will probably want to develop a theme from scratch and then build, build the design based on, um, build the site based on that design. So, just, they're just going to code everything from scratch. And then right now you can even choose to use page builder. Just start with a blank page and then just um, create, create the whole design out. So I think right now page builders are quite um, a hot thing in WordPress community. So it saves a lot of time, definitely. It's true. I'm yeah. trying to use page builder myself. But, um, you know, back in the day when people were actually getting someone else to design, yeah. designing it, they're using the PSD and yeah. HTML. Yeah. Doesn't work. WordPress, I can't put it in there. Oh, the, that, that is when you are you want to look into theme development. So it's it's not just converting um, the PSD into HTML. It's converting the PSD to, into HTML and then converting the HTML into um, to, to insert WordPress um, template functions, that kind of stuff. So that is what we do before page builders exist. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah. well, even when they're using page builders. So I wouldn't say they slow down. I, I, you definitely have to use the more reputable ones, right? So I wouldn't say they slow down your site. Um, but if I were to choose um, whether to use one, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that wouldn't be a reason for me not to use a page builder. I just didn't want to, I just didn't like the way it kind of conflicts with my workflow. But I wouldn't say a page builder slows down your site. Um, maybe if you're not using the more popular ones, then could be, but if you're using the famous few, then you should be fine. Yeah. Because of, like, for example, uh, Visual Composer, if let's yeah. say you don't use it anymore, if you just you deactivate the plugin, it's just a bunch of shop codes, right? Yeah. So that's why right now all the um, leading page builders they they don't they are not shop code based. So. So it's safe to, I mean, if you were to change your theme, your, your site is probably going to be haywired as well. But at least some visuals, it's not like shortcodes. Um, like V, for example, is shortcode based, if I'm not wrong. I haven't used that in a long time. Um, Elementor and Beaver Builder are the two more popular ones. They are not shortcode based. So if you were to use that, um, and if you were to change your theme, it's still going to, your site is not going to look as good, but it's still not going to be a bunch of shortcodes. 
Firstly, yeah. advise us against using plugins that use shortcodes. No, no, no. That's um, that's page builders using shortcodes. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. It's not really a good idea. Like for example, if you were, if you were to use DV and then you want to change your theme in the in the future, then your site is gonna be all shortcodes. No, not, no, no um, images, no nothing. So that's why people they they don't really want to use a page builder that is shortcode based. Visual Composer, DV, to name a few. Yeah. It's not that they take a long. It's just doesn't good. If you were to change a theme and then suddenly all your site is just gibberish, you know. Yeah. So that's why it's quite frowned upon. Shortcode based up builder. Yeah. But still, a lot of people like DV is, DV is still so popular, and it can still perform well. So, but if I were to choose, I wouldn't use a shortcode base. There is plugins which uh, remove the shortcode if you need to change. Yeah, I think there is. Um, there are there are plugins that remove that. So, I guess at the end of the day, if you want to go through, if you if you are if you are if you are adamant on using DV, for example, and then you can, you can still look into that solution to remove all the shortcodes. So. Yeah. It's okay, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing against that. <laughs> yeah. So if I use, uh, instead of just for the team itself, yeah. if I want to make some changes in the plugin, and yeah. I follow the structure, yeah. if I put that, and it's in the child team? Um, yeah, that's what... Um, that's how we usually overwrite uh, WooCommerce templates. If you're familiar with WooCommerce templates, then they will just encourage you to uh, copy this file and then paste it into your shell theme. And then you probably have to put it, yeah, you have to put it inside a WooCommerce folder in your shell theme first. And then you can overwrite um, the same, the same um, structure. So that's um, how you would want to overwrite uh, templates that are um, from, from plugins. But like what I mentioned just now, um, I think the first thing you should look into is to use is to use a hook, like an action or a filter to change the thing instead of using template overrides. Because then when WooCommerce release a, ma a major version, your template might be outdated. But, yeah, but it works uh, well. It's because they, they don't really have some, some, in certain situations, they don't have the hook that you want. So you have to override the template. I have, a, I have a talk on that. I can link it to you. <laughs> I did a talk on that. I can drop the link in the <laughs> meetup section, uh, comment section, and then you can take a look at it. But essentially what it does is allows you to just customize, um, extends WordPress. It allows you to customize and add features on top of WordPress in a, in a different way. It's one of the reasons why WordPress is such an extendable um, software. So without hooks, you probably wouldn't see a lot of third party. Um, no, no, no. React hooks is uh, it's it's kind of the same thing. Like when it reaches this, um, the code reaches this runtime, and then it's gonna run your, run your code. So it's kind of the same idea. So it's um, yeah, when your code reaches this particular line, and then it's gonna call whatever um, functions that are being hooked into this. So it's kind of like the same idea. Um, a bit of a shameless plug, <laughs> but I think you can just go to my my blog and then just presentations. Yeah. Oh yeah, the the one in hooks is over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. External PHP files. External PHP files. Um, I feel that if you are. If you if you want to add something to your site that is more of a function rather than uh, the look and feel, you probably want to go to the plugin route. So you can also add uh, add external functions into um, your functions.php. But then again, if you were to throw everything, all your custom functions into your functions.php, right? If you were to change the theme, all your functions will be will be gone. So what if you're um, what I usually tell people is that if you want to add a certain function. Regardless of what theme you use, I want my site to have this function. I will create a plugin for that. So, if you if I just want to modify like the navigation bar because this theme has this ugly navigation bar, then I would do it in the functions.php or even in styles.css because that's pertaining to the theme itself. 
And if I were to change the theme, it doesn't matter. It's gone already, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so anything that's more function um, related, I'll go for the, to create a custom plugin. Yeah. Anything else? <laughs> so, from the to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I have. Thanks. <laughs>